Alrighty, so there is never a point in time where Marjorie Taylor Greene will not continue to say something nightmarishly stupid. And I understand wholeheartedly I'm poisoning the well here. And I've made peace with that. Because I'm going to talk about her arguments. But to those of you that think insults are ad hominem attacks, I would like to raise you a you're stupid and shut the fuck up. No, I'm kidding. What I'd like to point out is ad homs are when I dismiss everything you're saying because I think you're stupid. An insult is when I've determined you're stupid after dismissing everything you're saying by some other means. There, now we've addressed that before anybody starts coming in saying, <laughs> well, you see, Cirrus, insults aren't arguments. I, I, I quite frankly don't care. I will insult this woman. She deserves it. But before we get into that, let's get into something that doesn't deserve insult, the fan art section. So this is actually a concept piece that was done by Bon Bon Berry before the full version of the Beach Cirrus was finished. Uh, so you'll probably notice that most of the design pieces are here from that version, except the floaties were a different color during this stage of the model. But they put it in fan art, so it goes up in fan art chronologically, as you do. Uh, generally, uh, General New Ground Simp submitted this one. It is a uh, Furbis. You will never be able to unsee this. You cannot unsee this. You, you, you. It is a Furby, and therefore it is cursed. As always, thank you all for your fan art submissions, despite how cursed it is and how strange it makes me feel. And let's, uh, hmm. Hmm. Let's go ahead and see what she's got to say today. So this is concerning to me, and that's why I'm saying there's more research needed by the FDA before the FDA approves these vaccines. Because here's the problem, Anna. Once the vaccines are approved by the FDA, FDA we are going to see the mandates for vaccines ramp up far more than they are right now. They're so let's go ahead and point out right now, anybody who's been upset about the thought of vaccine mandates, can I point out that you've already lived through vaccine mandates? Like, like literally, how many times have you ha heard that you, your kid cannot go back to school until they receive their vaccinations so that they can coexist with the other kids there without getting them sick? Have you heard that? Good. Then you've already lived through what vaccine mandates sound and feel like. And you were fine. They're going to be mandated. And I fear they'll become law in some cities and some states. Uh, Biden would love to make it the law of the land. And I think that's completely wrong. Again, I'm not anti-vax. I am completely for people. I'm not anti-vax. But there's always a but being allowed to make choices, medical choices for themselves and their families. So here's the thing, though. So, OK, I am not generally uh, for forcing people to do things with their body that they don't want. But there, again, there's always a but. Marjorie, can I ask you a question? Is it a choice for you if you are getting something that is supposed to now, I am not 100% certain on exactly how uh, efficacious the vaccines are in stopping transference. Um, I will need to do more research where that is concerned. But for a lot of cases, when we are trying to eradicate something and we can eradicate some things with vaccines, if we're trying to stop transference, is it not a matter of not necessarily whether or not your family can consent to this being uh, being given to them. They can they can choose not to if they're fine not going out in places that, you know, require vaccines. My question is when do I get to consent on whether or not you get me sick? When do I get to consent on whether you transfer a deadly disease to me? Now, again, Defer to the experts on the efficacy of the vaccines because more research is always being done the more we learn about how things operate and the, the better we get at understanding 
how COVID operates, especially as COVID mutates. So, and I'm I'm hoping that YouTube does not randomly uh, strike my channel for COVID misinfo when there isn't any here. I've literally said defer to experts. Please, YouTube. I don't want to do this shit again on more things. But if a segment of the population is not able to get vaccines, this is the, this is this way with other things as well. If a segment of the of the population is not able to get vaccines, it is the responsibility of everyone else to get vaccinated to lower the chances of them transferring something to people who are immunocompromised. If you, as a person, argue that the amount of people who are immunocompromised is not enough for them to be part of your consideration when determining what you will or won't do, um, then I encourage you to find a loved one or a family member and tell them yourself that their well-being does not matter enough to you for you to get vaccinated. Before we continue with the video, I want to go ahead and throw out that fun reminder that we are on YouTube, so if you haven't subscribed already, please consider doing so. It would be an immense help for the channel, and those numbers really do mean a lot. And if you want to catch any of what goes on on this channel live, then the best thing you can do is head over to Twitch and hit that follow button over there so you can know when I go live there. Alrighty, I'll stop taking up your time here. Back to the video. I just, I just want you to have the balls to do it. That's all I ask. Over and above anything, if you are willing to say that about a random nobody on the street that you do not know, please have the wherewithal to say it to somebody who you do know. Because likely they will get affected by someone they don't know thinking about them as somebody they don't know. And I don't think the FDA should approve a vaccine that, that it doesn't seem to be that effective, especially with COVID-19 raging all over the country. At least that's what the media tells us every single day. Um, but I we actually have numbers for this, Marjorie. It's not that the media is telling us this every day. Um, let's see here. Do, 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 do. COVID numbers, United States. This... Do, 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 do. Oh, dearie me, my... Looky here, so January 11th, 2021, and then it slowly starts going down, and then, up, oh, up, oh, up, oh, here's Delta. Now we're up to 159,000 new cases, going up and up and up, constantly. So, uh, we have, in the United States, 37.5 million cases, uh, which is 10% of the United States infected, and uh, 626,000 deaths, uh, which is 1.7%, uh, almost a 2% mortality rate. This isn't about, Marjorie, this isn't about the media trying to scare you. This is about real numbers we can we can actually look at, uh, taken from experts. We, we can do that. There's a thing we can do. This is this lovely thing called deferring to experts. When it's outside of your field, and vaccines are outside of my field, uh, you defer to what expert opinion is here because the basis on which you came to your conclusion is likely not with the same kind of foundation as the basement that they reached their conclusion you in your armchair with the three brain cells you have working in overtime versus them and their labs likely you in your armchair are not going to reach the correct conclusion uh, and if you do it will be by chance not through the efficacy of your synapses. I talked to local hospitals here in my district and here in my state. Yes, the, the waiting rooms get full, but guess what? The waiting rooms are full um, of all kinds of things, not just COVID. And yes, the waiting rooms are full. I know this because Raz was in the emergency room and it took two days for her to actually get a room. And then they only let her be in that room uh, for one day, uh, despite the fact that what they released her in could only very, very, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? To call it stable is laughable, um, especially since half the work still needed to be done, but it couldn't be done uh, with her in hospital care because those beds are needed for other things. But it's what you're going to say after this 
that I think is terrible. So I'm going to rewind just a sec. And go ahead, Marjorie. Tell us the thing. The waiting rooms are full um, of all kinds of things, not just COVID, some, you know, car accidents, trauma, uh, other illnesses, cancer, and so forth. Uh, but they're seeing about 30% of those numbers being COVID cases. Yeah, that's significant, Marjorie. 30% is statistically significant. When you consider the vast amount, and you gave a few examples, of other things you can be in the hospital for, 30% is statistically significant. So while the news tries to tell us the hospitals are slam packed with COVID, that's just not the case. Everyone needs to get back down. No, 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 that is the case. Think, okay, God, in, in, everybody in chat, in comment section, I want you to list all the different diseases and reasons for being in the hospital you can know. And yes, that weird gross thing you did in college that you didn't want to tell all of your friends at the bar you had to go to get removed at the hospital, that counts. Think of all the things you had to, you could possibly do to get landed in a hospital. And now consider that of the, and I bet if I sample my comment section, I will find at least 100 unique things, if not a thousand unique things. 30% of them are COVID. 30% Marjorie, do you, it's not, oh my God, they're slam packed with COVID cases. That's not the case. No, 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 30%? of the hospitals being slammed with COVID patients is what we would expect for it to be the case that they are slam packed with COVID cases. 30% is unfathomably statistically significant. Uh, back down to common sense and remember that, you know, we're human. We, we can't live forever. We are going to catch all kinds of diseases and illnesses and other viruses. And we get hurt sometimes. Um, so I, I'm all for let's let's be rational with this. Let's yeah, let's be rational. It's called in places where wearing a mask is opportune and helpful. Do so. Uh, if you have the ability to get a vaccine for this, uh, do so. Uh, those are common sense things because common sense is literally just the biases that you've accumulated in your life. So. One of my biases that I've accumulated in my life is deferring to medical and scientific experts when it comes to medical and scientific things, Marjorie. And the consensus medically and scientifically is that masks work to help STEMI and in many cases prevent the spread of COVID and vaccines are incredibly helpful in the very least in the chance you get COVID, they reduce the symptoms of it by at least 90%. And there is data to suggest that they also help where transference is, con is concerned. But again, defer to experts on that if you do not believe me where those things are concerned. So uh, Marjorie, I, I would ask when, when you refer to common sense, when when you say common sense, what, what do you mean? What does it mean for you? Because if it's deferring to what you thought up in the middle of a fucking coke binge uh, on your chair, that does that that means nothing to me. It means zero to me. Also, can I just say, if your answer to an epidemic with a almost 2% mortality rate, which again is statistically significant, it's, if we had a 2% mortality rate for the common cold, we would freak the fuck out. We don't, though. So, Marjorie, when we have a statistically significant chance of death, and again, death is not the only important thing, uh, there's also the lung scarring and other long-term complications to ma uh, that matter as well. When we are talking about these things, the correct thing to say is not, eh, everybody has to die sometime. Like, again, I refer back to my, if you would say that to a family member, your family member's in the hospital, uh, they're, they're dying, but they might be able to get better. Uh, they're going to be kicked out of the hospital, uh, and their bed's going to be given to somebody else, and you just look at them and go, eh, you gotta die sometime, mom. You gotta die sometime, cousin. 
You gotta die sometimes. Sometimes, plural, depending on if you're Goku. Like, no. That is not the right thing to say to people. You gotta die sometime is not the correct response as the representative for my district in Georgia when dealing with an epidemic. I'm sorry, no, I fucking refuse. Let's be careful, let's be cautious, and let's not turn into an authoritarian regime that forces uh, shots and arms on people that don't want it. So, um, authoritarian regime. So, under the Bush administration, when we had required vaccines for children, um, was that... Was that an authoritarian regime, Marjorie? Was it an authoritarian regime under Trump when we still had required vaccines for children? Was that? Uh, and, oh, or military, by the way. Uh, if you didn't know, if you're in the military, there are a slew of vaccine requirements that you have to have. But it, is that? Would you call that authoritarian? Would you, would you on record, Marjorie... Call our military authoritarian. Now, I believe it is. It's ridiculously hierarchical. But would you, as the Republican uh, pro-military uh, potentially ousted from her seat in 2022, representative of my district in Georgia, would you do that? Would you say America and anything like America under Republicans and the military, which is rigidly conservative in many ways? Uh, are authoritarian. Would, would you do that? I, I don't think you would, Marjorie. I really don't. And that's kind of the point here. What Marjorie does is she relies on scare words. She relies on scare tactics. These are the things that allow her to maintain a voting base at all. Not that she was voted into office. She got defaulted into office. And if you don't believe me about the scare words thing, I just, I understand if you might think that that is not correct. Uh, if you think that she does not rely solely on uh, preconceived notions of her base, confirmation bias of her base, and scare words and scare tactics. Okay. I understand you might not believe me on that, and I raise you this. This is Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene, and I approve this message so that you know the facts. 19 cowardly Senate Republicans joined Chuck Schumer and the Senate Democrats to pass a so-called infrastructure bill that's really the first step in Biden's communization of America. So our government's infrastructure bill, a thing that, by the way, is just part of standard budget budgeting, like that's just kind of a normal thing that you do uh, as a government, right? That's just That's just kind of how you operate. Um, that is, that's a communism to Marjorie Taylor Greene. Now, I, I, I'm just going to say this right now. I may dedicate another video to looking at that infrastructure bill to determine how I feel about it and what it does and does not address. But there's a cynical part of me that wants to say the fact that Marjorie Taylor Greene doesn't like it is good enough for me. Now, again, that is not a good reason to support a bill. That is not a good reason in any way, shape, or form. But there is a terribly cynical part of me that wants to say that. Oh, but continue. Uh, com communization. Do you know? Do you know what a communism is? Because uh, I'm pretty sure that the infrastructure bill does not get us closer to a stateless, classless, moneyless society. I'm like 90% certain it doesn't do that. Now it goes to the House where Republicans need to stay united and stop this bill. But Marjorie, you guys don't have the House. Even if Republicans stay united, that bill's probably going through because partisan politics will make it happen. Uh, so that's kind of fucking funny. But, you know, in any, in any case, sure, Republicans stay united and what else? Now Democrats are tying this to the $3.5 trillion budget full of woke identity politics and AOC's pro-China Green New Deal. All right. So who here is familiar with the Green New Deal? And can you tell me which part of it are, are pro-China? Moreover, even with parts of it being pro-China, can you tell me in which ways that's a bad thing? 
because there are ways you can be pro any country without it being particularly bad, right? So the statement pro-China Green New Deal, that tells me nothing. That's descriptive of nothing. In what ways is it pro-China? In what aspects? Uh, what parts of the bill make it so? Um, now, what part of a budget plan is fill filled with woke identity politics? Again, I need to actually look at the bill itself to get an idea. But here's the thing. People in Marjorie's base are not going to have that same thought. Their brain... And this is not me saying that they're stupid. This is, this is, it's not that. It's literally human beings are lazy. We look for shortcuts where we can. Uh, and a good shortcut that a lot of people can take is the person I like said a thing. I agree with it. Now that's bad. You and I would all agree that's a really bad way of determining how to do things. But it is nonetheless a thing that we all do on some level. And we can't get away from that. So, woke identity politics. In what ways does a budget plan have woke identity politics? Unless you're talking about, oh, some extra funding might go to an African-American school. Oh, no. Financially disenfranchised people might get money. Oh, no. Ugh. These America last bills will usher in amnesty for illegals. Okay. Why do I care? Like, okay, so... Amnesty. What is the purpose of amnesty? This is where I'm, I'm getting a definition as correct as I possible. When you look up amnesty, it automatically gives you Amnesty International. I'm looking for just the definition so that I don't get this wrong. So... A pardon for offenses, especially political offenses against the government. So, a pardon for illegal immigrants. Okay, cool. And? what? S seriously, ser can someone explain to me why the fuck I should care about illegal immigrants? Anybody? A a why should I care? In what ways do they affect me? In what ways does another person whom I do not know coming into my country do anything that hurts me. Now, if you say, oh, well, they might hurt you. Cool. A, a citizen can hurt me. A citizen can do just as much damage to me as an illegal immigrant. What part about them being an illegal immigrant increases the likelihood of them doing things to me? And before you say anything about that, um, I just want to point out that uh, statistically, illegal immigrants actually commit less crime and are better for the economy. Yeah, just, just throwing that out there. Uh, in fact, actually, I have another video I'm going to be doing later uh, where America's issue with illegal immigrants, uh, trying to crack down on them instead of trying to help them attain citizenship, um, has led to us having to use more prison labor in places where we could have used immigrants uh, who could take, um, a lot of times they will take lower pay for certain jobs, especially like farming jobs, agricultural jobs. Um, they'll take those, those jobs because... The money that they get a lot of times gets sent back. Let's say they're from Mexico. They get sent back to Mexico. And that money stretches further there. It helps support their families. I've actually known several people who work here for six months and go back to Mexico for six months. And then work here for six months and go back for six months. Because six months of pay here can support you for a year over there. And having people who are willing to work those jobs because it is financially beneficial for them too is good for your economy. When we have to rely on prison populations for that, we have a word for what that is. It's, that's just slavery. Like, that's all it is, is it's just slavery. But, you know, we're not, we're not here to talk about the 13th Amendment, I guess, and how that's literally just slavery. So yeah, amnesty for illegal immigrants, I'm fine with that, whatever. Higher taxes. What does higher taxes mean here, though? If it's higher taxes on people making over 400000 a year, uh, fine, whatever. I, 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 even if I was making 400000 a year, fine, tax me. I, I literally don't give a shit. I don't. When, from what I understand, most of the taxes that Biden was proposing before were for people who were making above 400000 a year. 
that's well above a living wage. That's well that's that's well above a comfortable living wage. You can tax that at 50% and you're still making 200,000 a year and if you're crying about making 200,000 a year, boo hoo, for you, I I guess I I just can't care. I have zero empathy, zero sympathy. I'd rather that money go to the local schools. That's another problem. The fact that it's mostly property taxes that fund school, that's a whole other issue. Uh, but let's go ahead and see here. What else is Skyrocketing here? inflation. How does the budget uh, increase inflation by that much? This feels like just throwing a thing that people are upset about generally. Um, but let me go ahead and point out, if you are talking about the fact that a lot of this stuff is, is trying to push the federal minimum wage higher, and you think that that will increase inflation... Uh, yes, it will, but it will not increase inflation at a rate that does not equalize at some point with the minimum wages. You see, this funny thing happens in places that go to a $15 minimum wage. Um, minimum wage doubles, and the price of everything around it goes up by like 5 to 30%. If your minimum wage doubles and the price of everything goes up by 5 to 30%, that's fine. Like... 30% is, is the high end, and that's rare. Usually things don't go up anywhere near that amount. But if you are literally doubling the amount of money that the majority of people are making, then your goods going up a little bit, that, that's fine. It really doesn't matter all that much. Um, I need to know in what ways this is affecting skyrocketing inflation. But we don't have that. Uh, we do have the fact that these are America last bills. Um, so amnesty for illegal immigrants increases the chances that they will actually become citizens of America. So that's actually an America first thing. Uh, higher taxes. That is going into the infrastructure of America. That's an America first thing. America first, not in the dog whistly sense. Skyrocketing inflation. Again, you need to explain how that's happening. And, and destroy American energy independence. We are already not America. We, we are already not energy independent. We have to buy most of our oil from other countries. We are not energy independent. You're not destroying something we don't have. Unless all of America went nuclear today, we would not be energy independent, Marjorie. I'm sorry, no. It's all a lie. The infrastructure bill just isn't infrastructure. And the budget passes the Green New Deal. And the only reason that that is even in your advertisement here is because uh, most people who are Republican are primed to hear Green New Deal and immediately think socialism. It's time for Republicans to stay united, stand strong, and vote no. Okay. Or we could continue to put trans positive things in front of your office uh, in Washington just to troll you. We can keep doing that. Do you remember when you harassed a woman's literal child for, for being trans? Do you remember that, Marjorie? Do you remember doing that? Because I remember that. Do you remember when you harassed a shooting victim for not liking guns? Do you remember that, Marjorie, when you did that to David Hogg? Do you remember that? I do. Paid for by Green for Congress. I can't wait to watch you get yeeted. And vote no for MTG. Yeah, this is a pro Yu-Gi-Oh stream now. No MTG. But the point is, if you noticed a trend during that entire thing, communization of America, America last bills, Green New Deal being said repeatedly, these are all thought terminating cliches. If you are a Republican in the United States, these words carry baggage for you. The word socialism carries baggage. The word communism carries baggage. Green New Deal carries baggage. And because those words carry baggage and significance, Marjorie will use them. She knows that they are shorthand for you. She knows that, and she will manipulate that. One, because she's a scummy human being, and two, because she's a politician, that's what they do. And if you think a politician's actually on your side for anything, uh, don't. J just don't. Just don't. <laughs> I'm sorry, just don't. Always hold politicians accountable. Never let them get a free lunch off of you.
That said, if you want to support the channel and what I do, you know how to do it. It's in the description below. As always, everyone. Hopefully, I've made myself at least somewhat clear on a lot of this stuff. There are just things you don't do as a congresswoman, and one of them is telling people literally that, hey, you know, you'll, you're going to die someday. It's fine. As always, everyone. Insert end of video tagline here. <laughs>